How many cups of coffee do you like to have every day? If you are a coffee lover, then it is kind of guaranteed that you know Nescafe. And maybe you're now browsing or watching videos with a cup of coffee in your hand. Nestle is the company that manufactures Nescafe and they are one of the leaders of the current coffee market and they have been leading the industry since many decades. As of 2020, Nescafe has a market share of 70% sign in the worldwide market. The amount of revenue that Nestle earns through Nescafe will surprise you. In the year 2019, Nestle earned a revenue of 90.46 billion US dollars and it grew up to 95.7 billion US dollars by the year 2021. However, growing the coffee market in Japan wasn't easy for the company. The story takes us back to the time of World War II. Since that time, Nestle started to grow its market in different parts of the world by expanding its business beyond its boundaries. And within a couple of decades, Nestle was just entering the market in Japan with Nescafe, which was already very famous in many regions of the world. The Japanese people were solely in love with tea during that time, and the name hot drink was used to bring the name of green and regular tea into their minds. Entering the Japanese market, Nescafe started distributing the products in the country and started promotional activities but the people were not interested to buy them. Even if someone buys coffee they did not find the taste of coffee better than tea. During that time Nestle was very confident about the taste, quality, and packaging of their product and they knew that somehow people will like it. The company started to invest more in marketing and promotional activities in Japan. No matter what the company did, the Japanese people did not like coffee at all. The company had no other way than to invite experts to interpret the situation. To have an answer they invited the famous French psychologist Dr. Rapail to Japan in the year 1975. The man was one of the psychological geniuses during that time. Coming to Japan he thought to conduct a study based on the Japanese people to understand their psychology better. He called it a stimulus experience and he interviewed some Japanese people by playing soothing music in the background. Here the key focus of Dr. Rapail was to understand the memories and emotions of Japanese people and to dig deeper into their childhood. He asked separately about some of the famous Japanese products and their memories regarding the product. The participants started showing how they are connected emotionally with each of the products they use currently and why they like the products. Lastly, Dr. Rapail asked the participants about coffee. He found that most of the people were not familiar with coffee and they have no childhood memories with coffee or any type of similar products. Coffee was not even connected remotely with their memories and emotions, and the people have never tasted coffee. Dr. Rapail got a clear hint about where to begin through this stimulus experience study. He asked the leaders of Nestle to stop investing in marketing and promotion in Japan and to engage with the emotion of the people. Along with this, one of the greatest marketing strategies was about to get implemented. As per Dr. Rapail's suggestion, Nestle focused on engaging with the emotion of Japanese children instead of creating awareness through advertising. Nestle started distributing coffee-flavored candies and chocolates in Japan. Being one of the largest manufacturers of chocolate around the world, Nestle did not face so much difficulty in doing so. The kids and children's in Japan love the coffee-flavored candies and chocolates as well. Not only this, but the older people also started to know about the flavor of coffee as the children were fond of it. The approach of engaging with the memory and emotion of the Japanese people started to continue. It's hard to believe, but Nestle waited for 10 years to re-enter the Japanese market with their coffee. By the time many children grew old and started involving in higher education, education and workplaces. As a part of their daily life, and at the end of tiring daily activities, they started loving a hot sip of coffee as much as you do. The strategy has helped Nestle to establish its business in one of the biggest markets in Asia. Through such research and development activity, Nestle is now one of the top players in Japan.
As of 2020, Instant Coffee by Nescafe had a market share of 73% in Japan. The workaholic Japanese people have made Nescafe a part of their life. All this time you have understood the importance of the quality of a product and its price. But marketing strategies are similarly important for a business. The right decisions at the right time are the key to each business, which has been proven by the approach of Nestle's marketing in Japan. So, if you're learning about business, it is high time that you learn about marketing as well in depth to cope with the contemporary marketing strategies in this competitive business world.